Yeah, because it was kind of, hey, baby. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Sport Karate Live. <laughs> and I'm here with uh, my co-host for the day again, uh, Pablo Moreno. What's hey. Up, uh, how are you? How's everybody? I'm fine. Just got here from Miami. It was fun, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, we just, uh, you know, Pan Am weekend was last weekend. It was a great tournament. Thanks, everybody, yeah. for joining us. We're going to have a great show. Give us a share now. Um, we got Yoscar coming on, Gomez, Mario Amato. Um, you know, you're, you're going to be on, you're on as, as a co-host as well. But uh, you did good at the tournament, too. Um, thanks, everybody, for joining us. Give us a share. We're about to start it. Um, hey, Pablo, so you got uh, first place, the division, right? Yes. yes, I won my division and then lost to Cam in overtime. Yeah, man, that was an exciting fight right there, too. Uh, it went down yeah. the wire. and um, I, I think pretty much of all the fights were, like, really nice at this tournament. Like, the finals were very close. Every fight that we saw were, was exciting this time. Like, sometimes you see fights that are boring, but this time, every fight was, like, pretty amazing. Yeah, man, I guess that's the way it is, too. And, um, and uh, you know, always in Pan Ams, it's kind of always... You know, it's always been kind of known as a fighters tournament. But, yeah. But uh, you know, it's growing in there with the forms too. It's cool to have. You know, some of the winners that we had from you yeah. know from forms were awesome. You know, Mario is one of them. Um, yeah. But it was a great tournament. and the venue was awesome. The new venue. Oh um, yeah. Yeah, plenty of room. It was to great, go. and everything was close, like pretty close. Yeah, man. Everything the, the, Free. The only thing is that the pizza doesn't get on time, but that's that's just uh, <laughs> for waiting uh, Friday for like two hours and it never came because I, yeah, I know. I it but e everything was amazing. The the venue was perfect for fighters. So yeah, it was I think what it's, it's a it's a tournament that thinks in the in the in the competitors, not not just in the promoter. So it was great. Yeah, for sure. Hey, so um. Uh, you know, we've been sponsored by ASG for years and then, you know, in the dojo now. And then, uh, you know, now we got Taco Bell and that was. I can cool. hear you. I, can you hear me? Uh, I think you can froze up for me a little, froze up a little bit there. I'm going to bring you down and bring you back up. But yeah, guys, let's see if he could come back on to the show. And uh, he got a little frozen there. But uh, we're going to have a great show today. A lot of guests. Let's bring on. Some of the sponsors, I'm going to be looking out for Pablo right here. I guess he froze for a second. Try to exit Pablo and come back on. Doris Brothers, a uh, great company. That was, he, you know, those power rings. Uh, Godfather of Awards. We got uh, Fire Zinc and Top 10. Um, they got more than just gear as well. They got a bunch of martial arts supplies, so make sure you support them as well. ASG, been, for, been with me since the beginning. And, um, you know... Great company, a great company, and um, yeah. So, point fighter proved events. We're waiting to see if Pablo's gonna come on. Uh, if not, we uh, we got other guests standing by, so let's see if Pablo could get back on. Um, so yeah, there's the that's the, the team they want. We want team fighting pretty much, and uh, lightweight grand, heavyweight grand. Um, Yoscar won the 30 and up, um, uh, you know, it was. Great. Uh, Mary won, I think, the overall forms grand, but she competes in so many divisions. That's going to be cool to talk to her about that. Um, hey, let's see. Pablo looks like he's coming back or he's trying to come back. We got a few point fighter approved events this week uh, in a few weeks coming up. The ESPN, Whitewater Sports, that's the International Martial Arts Festival. I'm actually, that's on ESPN as well. Everybody knows uh, the U.S. Open's on ESPN. But this event as well, and uh, they're going to be live streaming the daytime on the stage and then at night. And here we go. We got Pablo coming on again. Let's see. Hey, Pablo, what's up? Hey, yeah, I guess it froze up for a second. Can you hear me? I don't know if you can hear me. Pablo. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear me. He's going through something difficulties there but um he is calling from mexico he got to the line. 
But yeah, I'm going to be commentating there the night show as well. So that's going to be good. Um, that's in weekend, the Central Valley Fox Classics in California, Fresno. And then we got the Music City Smackdown as well in, um, in Tennessee. So we got three. Let me bring them down. He thinks <laughs> he doesn't know that we're on uh, together, but um, that's fine. Let's see if we can get him on to the show again. Um, uh, let's see if we can get him on. Pablo, if you're watching, I see that you have the laptop down, and I, and I don't know if you want to come back on, and I'll bring you up when I see you, okay? So those are three awesome events coming up. Those are next Point Fighter approved events. Let's get on to the show. Um, let's bring on Mary Amato right now to the show, and um, it's going to be my second time I interview her. Hey, Mary, what's going on? Hey, what's going on? Awesome, awesome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah. Hey, so um, it's, you know, we have some history this year together. Uh, you know, we were on, uh, we were together on the Power Hour, right? With yeah, that was so much fun. Yeah, that was so much fun, which is a preview of the, um, of the Battle of Atlanta, which was great. And let's see if we got Pablo back. <laughs> hey, Pablo. Let's see. Pablo. Hey. Can you He's hear me? back. Hey. I'm back. You're back. Yeah, well, I don't see anybody else. I don't see Alex. Can you hear us or not? Oh, man. Hey, Pablo, maybe you could try it from your phone. Try to download it from your phone and try to get on that way. I don't know if you can hear us. Okay? So we'll bring we'll bring you back on, all right? I'm going to bring you down. Hey, so Mary... Yeah, it was a cool experience from from Atlanta. That was awesome, and yeah, it was studio and stuff. But uh, but I never had you on this show before. And yeah, so it's pretty cool to have you here. You just came off your win at the Pan Ams, um, and you were awesome there. I got to see you. You know, I was live streaming a lot of the events. Right. right. You so, you were filming the the divisions on Friday, and you like posted the one of me and Sammy from Musical Forms. Oh, yeah. Hey, you and Sammy, you know, Sammy Smith, Paul Mitchell, you guys are two awesome competitors, and you guys go head-to-head -head a lot, right? And yeah, we do. That's that's awesome because, um, you know, you know, you both are super good at all the – so, it must be so hard for the judges, right? Like, I posted a video of you guys doing uh, your form. I think it was uh, – I don't know. It was extreme, right? Was it extreme? It was, it was musical forms. I don't do extreme. That's one of the ones I actually don't do. <laughs> yeah. All right. So musical forms, and like I'm, um, I was like, okay, let me post it, and you know, let's see what people think. But it's so hard, you know, to pick. Like I wouldn't want to be. The oh, for sure. All of these ladies, every single woman in our division is so talented. So it literally could go to any one of us any day. It's all about like. The perform who performed the best that day and who executed the best that day and basically sometimes it comes down to what style the judges are looking for. Yeah, that's what it is, right? Or maybe who makes the you know who doesn't make a mistake or anything. You know? Yeah, sometimes sometimes they'll say that they're like, "We you guys were all so good, so we're we're just watching for the mistakes." And that that's when you know it gets super technical because yeah, we're, we're, everyone is so talented, so it comes down to like judging. Almost like reverse judging, you know what I mean? Like yeah. people judge for the best, but they almost have to like look for something different. It's tough. It's really tough when you get to that high level. But um, <clears throat> but yeah, and you have. But the cool thing about it is though, you have a lot of divisions and forms and weapons to compete in, right? How many? Yeah. Did you did like eight or nine. Yeah, right? this weekend I did nine divisions. Wow, nine divisions. That's awesome. That's great. Let me see if I got... Oh, look, I think I got Pablo back. Nine divisions. That's yeah. crazy. That's, that's super... That's valid. Hey, Pablo, what's up? Can you hear me hey. right now? Pablo. <laughs> Let's see if he can hear us. Hey, coach. Hey, can you, you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Can you... Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, you can see Mary too, and you can hear her. Yeah, yeah, I see both. Okay, perfect. That's perfect. Finally. Hey, the co-host. Hey, so the co-host now. Oh yeah. Pablo was talking earlier about the Pan Ams. He was, you know, 
It's a it was a great, you know, pretty I good still have bad service on. All right. <laughs> Pablo, try to fix it and then try to can you hear me good now? Uh yeah. Okay, well try to see if you could try to fix it and I'll bring Let me with, with both car. Is that cool? Let me try to change my, my Wi Fi. Yeah, go ahead. Have, all right. Okay. Yeah, it's all right. I, I need him, though, for your Oscar's interview because it's translating. Yeah. Hey, so, so, yeah. So, you know, you competed in about nine divisions. Now, when you're doing that, um, how, you know, you know, when you're a fighter, of course, you have, you can have eight, nine fights in a day, yeah. right? But you, you know, it's, it's one division. You're, you're doing, all separate divisions so it's kind of like sep does your mind how's how's your mind frame going into each like and after you compete you have to mm -hmm. get about the, the what happened yeah exactly so the mindset for for basically it doesn't matter how many divisions you're doing if you just do one form if you do 12 it doesn't matter the the biggest thing is to like have a clear mindset and to only focus on that one division that's going on at once only focus in the moment that one specific thing, doesn't matter if I drop, doesn't matter if I fall, doesn't matter if I got first place, forget about it, move on to the next thing. And forget about that one, move on to the next one. Yeah, now. So about like having that, that empty mind principle, focusing, right. and then boom, give all my focus, all the power into that one division, and then, and then same thing for the next one. Hey, and how about adjustments? Do you sometimes going with like any adjustments like um okay i have to go maybe a little bit harder or faster uh, uh based on how you did in the last or it doesn't matter like you have a strategy already set in place from before you even get there you know, in a way like sometimes you know if you don't if you didn't do as well or if something if like i kind of messed up or something in the division prior i i have like that extra energy or the extra um uh, to like go go harder you know in the second one but it, it would never be like I nailed my form, so I'm gonna go easier on this one, or I nailed this form, maybe I'll try something new. It's I still am very focused on specific divisions like I had always trained for, but it's it's like kind of that extra adrenaline or that extra power that might switch a little bit. Yeah, for sure. It's very mental. Um, yeah. You no, know, it's I, I've been interviewing a lot of forms people this year and uh, and weapons and like it. I see a lot of a lot of similarities when it comes to fighting and forms, a lot of strategy going, yeah. you know, thinking or not thinking right too much. So that's great. Hey, so, um, Pablo, I see you there. Uh, I'm going to bring you on when your start comes. Okay. So just, um, uh, I'm not sure if you can hear me good, uh, but I'll bring you up. We'll try it again when, when we bring on your start. Hey, so you had a big move this year. Uh, we talked about it. Yeah. Uh, at the, um, you know, at the Power Hour in Atlanta. And how's that going for you? You moved from Chicago, and now you're in a university uh, in Tampa, right? Yeah, I go to University of Tampa now. I'm actually in my dorm room now. <laughs> um, it, it was a big it was a big move. In the beginning of August, I moved from Naperville, Illinois, which is like a suburb of Chicago, down to Tampa. Um, I did – I. I did that two week trip in Costa Rica. So that was like that was before awesome. I even started college. Oh my God. It was incredible. It was, it was a lot of work, but it was like a, a, a crazy way to transition going from home to a completely new place. But it, it has been very different living down here. Cause like, obviously I'm not living with my family anymore. I mean, they're like back home and stuff, but like I'm, I have roommates now. I have new friends, completely new people that I never met. And I think, like, the biggest difference is not being at Sharky's Karate. Like, that's, like, the hardest thing for me because we talk about this in Power Hour. Like, that's that's where I was every single and day. And we're teaching there and everything. Mm -hmm. like, since since I was born, basically, that's, that's where I would go every single day. If I'm not at school, I'm at the dojo. If I'm out of school, I'm at the dojo. So, like, being here, it, it's been really strange in the beginning, like, figuring out, like, Okay, if I'm not in class, what am I? What am I doing? But I've definitely like figured out ways to like fill my time or like do new activities, call people from home, make new friends. It's all coming together. Yeah, yeah, it comes together. How old are you now? You're um, you're. I'm actually gonna be 19 next week. 19 next week. All right, cool. 
All right, well, happy, pretty happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. So, wow, so 19, that's crazy. Like, what a life, you know, it's your year. Yeah. Young. And look at what you're doing. That's so awesome, though, right? I know everybody's proud of you. Um, Thank you. Back home. And, you know, it does take sacrifice, right? Um, yeah. You're doing. And uh, so how do you fit in the training? Is it, Do you have, like, a place to train? or Like, I'm sure at the gym there the, at the university. Mm -hmm. But is there any karate schools or anything around or, or that you've been scanning or anything? So what I have been doing, like I said, it's been a huge – a huge transition. Um, there's a brand new gym on campus. I think they say they renovated it in like 2016. So it's uh, the best way I can describe it is it's like a lifetime fitness on campus. So back at home, I would train at the dojo. That's where I'd work out. I would train and I would go to the gym maybe like once a week. And so here it's kind of flipped. I go to the gym every single day. And in gyms, they have like dance rooms. So I can, I can train hands. I can do... I could do drills like that, but it, it is very different. Like working out in the gym, I, I like kind of, I like planned a, a new type of workout, kind of figured out cool things. Like something cool about the school is they offer um, group fitness classes. So I've been like experimenting with that. And I actually just got a job teaching one of the group fitness classes. Oh, awesome. So that will be exciting. Um, I'll be teaching cardio kickboxing. So like that's another like fun way to keep training. Obviously, it's different at home. Like I taught kickboxing at home, but I'm not going to like traditional karate class. Or I'm not going to XMA, but it's still, it's, it's different. It's so different. I had to change my mindset, but I think a change in mindset is good sometimes. And it like still kept me like almost more motivated because it's a different way to do something, but I'm still figuring it out. Yeah. That's awesome. And you know, no excuses, right? Basically. Yeah. That's very overwhelming. Like that's a, all that stuff. A lot of people would just be like, "Okay, I'm just gonna take a little break." But like you're like, no way. Yeah, I'm, you're going hard, and you just want an overall at the point. Yeah. So that's yeah. Awesome. Now, you've won. Thank you. So how many uh, how many overalls have you won this year? I know you won uh, at AKA, right? You won an overall. Yeah. So actually, this was my. My second overall of the year. My first adult tournament of 2019, I won the overall. And the my my last adult tournament of 2019, I won the overall. <laughs> so I think that's, I well, thought that was kind of cool. You had a pretty good year. You had a good year considering you, it was basically your rookie year. Oh, my year. God. So I, I'm going to be honest. I did not think this year was going to end up like this at yeah. all. Like I told you in, in Power Hour, that, that was basically like halfway through the year. Yeah. Um, and like the women's division is incredibly talented. Yeah, yeah. Um, the women that were already in it, the women that moved up with me. So it was like, I had no idea that it was going to end up like this, but I think having the competitors and having new mindsets and in, having a, a huge change of lifestyle too makes everything more important. It makes me appreciate like the little time that I have to train or a little time I have to focus yeah. makes me appreciate it more and take advantage of it more. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, that's awesome. Hey, so, um, you know, that's some good memories there, right? We were talking a little bit uh, this week on Point Fighter on a discussion forum about memorable wins, right? So, yeah. So far, what's been your uh, most memorable win in your career? Of my career, definitely winning the women's overall at the AK Warrior Cup. That will, it was my first ever adult tournament. And it was in my hometown. It was, it will always be like one of the best memories I'll ever have. Not only because I, I won an overall, but I think the most important part was having my team and my family, my friends all there, like feeling the love. That to me is like, like the most incredible thing that I can remember. And then also winning this past weekend was super memorable too, because it was my first tournament of being in college. This was yeah. the Pan Am was the first tournament I had competed in while being a student at the university of Tampa. Yeah. So I, again, I'm super nervous going to the you're tournament. So, I was like, young, so like, you're probably going to make so many more memories, like in the, yeah. just the beginning, but it's cool. Like, you know, you're because when in 1997 I was a rookie and mm -hmm. I 
I won compete the compete. It was I won the lightweight grand. In my first tournament, I was kind of like, "Hey, this is the." And going into the tournament, I was kind of like, "How you were thinking? Like, man, all these awesome fighters there. I would have yeah. been happy if I would have taken third. I think so. Then I won lightweight grand, and then I'm like, "Hey, this is easy, <laughs> easier than I thought." But then, you know, the next tournament came, and it wasn't as easy. But like, at least I knew that okay, I can do this, and I and I'm there with them, right? So mm-hmm. you, that has to give. It's really it gives you an extra confidence, right? When you go out there and win that first one, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. But then there's pr- more pressure too, right? Then you, it's so mind. The mind is, uh, you know, it's psychological. Uh, oh, for sure. Yeah, but um, hey, we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up. I'm we're gonna bring in Pablo again and Yoscar. Thanks for joining us on the show. Congratulations. Thank and, you so uh, much. Yeah, it was awesome to have you. And, uh, you know, can't wait to see you again. Maybe, hey, maybe you, do you ever, you don't compete regionally, do you? Like when you fought, when you competed in uh, Chicago, did you compete? No, I, I did a lot of, it. actually, the, the AK circuit that Sensei Sharky yeah. is the president of, I competed in the AK circuit. Um, I don't know very many tournaments down here. I'm uh, trying to, like, hear more uh, about it and learn more about it. Yeah, I'll tag you about hey, and seminars. We got a world champion in Florida now. You know, <laughs> seminars. That's you know, sports. Yeah. Florida. Florida's huge, so um, I'm pretty sure we. You, you know, you're gonna get uh, called and stuff for that. I would so, love it. Yeah, I look forward to seeing you. All right. Well, um, you too. Joining us, and uh, we'll see you soon. Okay. You All too. Right. Thank you so much. All right, power. All right. So let's bring on. Let's try to get uh Pablo, <laughs> let's see. Hey, hey, can you hear me good? Pablo, no, no, oh man, <laughs> Pablo has no power right now. No, no, I don't think he can even see me. So let's bring on Yoscar. All right, it's up, Pablo, don't worry. <laughs> Hey, Oscar, ¿cómo está? Ale, bien, bien. Power, gracias por estar en el show. Uh, everybody that's listening now, uh, we're going to have uh, Spanish, uh, and I'm going to be uh, translating in English, okay? Because Oscar doesn't speak English. So I was kind of going to have Pablo on to help me, but I could speak it, but it's just not great, okay? So, Pop, uh, I mean, uh, Oscar, eh, ganaste otra vez Pan American. Congratulations. Gracias, Ale, gracias. Sí, volví a ganar el Panamericano otra vez. Sí, y um, tú lo ganas muchas veces, ¿verdad? He's won it a bunch of times. ¿Cuántas veces ganado el Panamerican? Uh, vine de, desde, imagínate, tengo muchos años viniendo al Panamericano. Este, me acuerdo que una vez peleé una final con Preston Clement. Eh, peleé también con Manny Jr. He ganado muchas veces el Panamericano, pero exactamente no te sé no, decir cuántas que... veces. En el cuanto, mucho, mucho, muchas veces, ¿no? <risa> Eso, entonces, ganaste, um, ok, ganaste el overall de 30 a 39, ¿right? Sí, uh, exacto. Ya, yeah, y también en el, en el equipo, uh, el, el equipo hizo muy bien también, ¿no? Ganaron uh, senior teams, ¿no? Sí. Y después en, uh, en el team fighting cogieron segunda, segundo lugar, el, el equipo está fuerte, muy fuerte ahora. Um, estará que, está creciendo también, right? The team is growing. Team Legend has been growing a little bit. Um, y tienen como uh, uh, Hope Hamilton, right? Natalie Allen. Uh, el, el equipo está creciendo. El equipo tú lo ves creciendo más, más que esto también. Do you see the team growing a little bit more too? Bueno, Ale, sí, ahorita de verdad nos está yendo muy bien en el equipo. Este, tenemos a Coca Guzmán en el equipo, que es un gran competidor, aparte una sí. excelente persona. Eh, aparte está todo el equipo de nosotros, que somos los mismos de siempre que nos han visto venir. José Ibarra, Cristian Rivas, Kelvin, Jesús. Ahorita entró Christopher, el hermano de Christian Riva, que es el que está ocupando ah. la posición que yo competía de heavyweight. Por eso subí a, a 30 más para que él ocupe esa posición de heavyweight y tener en todas las categorías un peleador completo. 
Yeah, wow. So you guys, they filled in all the slots pretty much um, with some other pickups is basically what he's saying. And he's fighting 30 and up now because of uh, Christian Rivas, um, his, um, he's, you know, his, his brother's now in, in the heavyweight division. So um, that's great. And don't say, um, entonces, it's muy activo, ¿verdad? Está muy activo. Todo, casi parece que casa, casi toda la semana está en un torneo, ¿no? Eso es, um, eso, eso es muy, impre, very, in, uh, you know, impressive, right? Es muy impresivo y muchos años haciendo eso, right? You've been going to tournaments for years over and over and over to each tournament. Um, y what's the secret? ¿Qué es el secreto para hacer eso? Bueno, Ale, yo vengo de una familia que mi papá es, hace karate desde muy joven y, y él me, me invitó un día a entrenar y yo le dije que sí, bueno, mira, eh, cuando ya yo cumplí 16 años me dijo, me tocó pelear con Tony en un torneo, un overall y, y Tony me invitó a su gimnasio y, y yo le dije a él, él me dijo que sí, gracias a a que él me dio esa oportunidad, mira, seguí mis raíces con mi papá, Tony me, me llevó a donde estoy ahorita, a como decimos nosotros en Venezuela, las grandes ligas, que son estos países, lo que es Guatemala, México, todos los países grandes en arte marcial y potencia. Y mira, secreto, entrenar, Ale. Ahorita Entra. yo te digo la realidad de la vida, yo ahorita no entreno casi karate, no me da tiempo de entrenar mucho karate. Hay un dicho que dice que lo que bien se aprende nunca se olvida. Pero cuando llego a un torneo, ¿sabes? Se me mete el espíritu como quien dice y salgo sí. al, el todo bueno, por el todo. Experiencia, ¿no? Experiencia. Y, um, y los torneos son como entrenamiento. A lo mejor eso te ayuda, ¿no? Es un poco, porque algunas veces ya cuando tú tienes más de edad no puedes entrenar tanto. A, a lo mejor cuando tú entrenas mucho, como Josh Horwich, yo hablo con esto. Uh, tienes que entre, entrenar más inteligente, no más, ¿right? Que cuando eres más joven, tienes que entrenar mucho, pero cuando estás más, tú sabes, más de edad, tienes que entrenar más smart, ¿no? Yeah, está. Lo que pasa es que también me ayuda que yo en mi país solo no hacía karate, yo jugaba también basquetbol, jugaba softball, entonces oh. me la pasaba todo el tiempo ocupado haciendo deporte. Yeah. Aquí, eh, eh, desde que estoy acá, sí hago muy poco deporte porque no me da tiempo por mi trabajo, pero es exactamente lo que tú dices. Cuando tú estás joven, tienes que dedicarte a entrenar, entrenar, entrenar para mantenerte. Pero cuando ya vas subiendo de edad, tienes que usar más la inteligencia que lo que hacías cuando tenías 15 a 25, 28 años de edad. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah, he's saying that he's always played other sports as well, pero todavía juega otro, otro deporte o no, como todavía juega. Sí, sí, cuando yeah. tenemos, cuando tengo una oportunidad que no me toca trabajar un sábado, un domingo, me voy con José, con Cristian, okay. y jugamos mucho basquetbol, ah. te hablo que jugamos basquetbol cinco, seis horas corrida. Wow, five or six hours basketball, and that, that helps, right, eso, eso ayuda también. I think, yo creo que basketball es el, más, el, el deporte que más seca a deporte porque tiene que correr de un lado al otro rápido, right? Y después para un poco y después boom. Es casi como una pelea de punto. You're like bouncing and then you sprint and then you kind of bounce and boom, move, right? Es casi yeah. <laughs> lo mismo, ¿no? So, es muchos peleadores buenos yo oigo que hacen basketball también y es, es un buen tip. Ahora, ¿quién es el mejor de Team Legend de basketball? ¿Quién es el que, el que gana? <risa> <risa> bueno, mira, yo cuando llegué aquí pesaba muy bajo, estaba muy bajo de peso. Ahorita soy heavyweight, peso 260 libras. Este, eh, José no está fácil. José es un jugador fuerte de básquet, José Ibarra. Cristian eh, tiene mucha agilidad, pero... Como te digo, en todos los deportes vale más la inteligencia que la fuerza y todo lo que venga. <risa> sí, seguro, seguro. Oye, uh, tú has tenido mucho, muchos torneos que he ganado, um, muchos torneos, pero muchas competencias, muchas memorias, pero este fue el topic de esta, de esta semana. Uh, ¿Cuál es el que más 
um, el mo the most me me memorable. No es más importante, pero el que más que te recuerda momentos en el deporte uh, que tú tienes de, de ahora, de todos estos años competing. What's your most memorable win? Bueno, Ale, mira, yo siempre, te, mi sueño siempre fue ganar Nazca, como quien dice, todos los torneos de Nazca. Pero como yo siempre se lo he dicho a mi maestro y se lo he dicho a todos aquí, para mí uno de los torneos más fuertes que yo he visto fue la batalla de Atlanta. Yeah. yeah más yeah. fuerte. Yeah, grande, grande, grande. Y te digo, lo que fue Chicago fue fuerte, pero no sentí una fuerza tan dura como me tocó en batalla de Atlanta, aparte que peleé con Jean, en la tarima, todas las peleas que hice abajo en mi categoría, después subir a la, a la gran overall, eh, los equipos, para mí fue, y ha sido el mejor torneo de este año, aunque te digo que yo el año pasado dije estas palabras, y se las dije a mi maestro, se las dije a Saín Pedraza, que es mi amigo, el año que viene, bueno, van a bailar pegado, como decimos nosotros en Venezuela, porque el año que viene no voy a perder ningún torneo de Nazca, y mira, voy, como lo dije, voy ahorita invicto con todos los torneos de Nazca ganándolo. Lo único que no he podido ir ni fue a Quebec ni a Toronto, pero de resto todos los torneos Tú ganas los he ganado. Los torneos, ¿verdad? Wow. Todos, todos los he ganado. Todos los que han hecho aquí en el circuito de Estados Unidos, todos los he ganado en fila. So eso, este año sería uno de los, 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 los most memorable, ¿no? Eh, que, que, que este año está haciendo, está en camino. Entonces, si tiene otro torneo este año, que vas a ir Diamonds, vas a ir a Diamonds. Sí, bueno, cerramos el circuito con el Diamond National, lo que es Nazca, y después de ahí nos vamos al Mundial a volver a cumplir la meta de, de hace dos años cuando oh, vayan aquí en Orlando. Uh, o oh, si sí, el Mundial Cuárez de WKC van a eso también. Ajá, ese ah, mismo. Wow, en Niagara Falls, ya. Yeah. Wow, qué bueno va a ser eso, entonces, um, hacer eso y a, a ir a WKT después de, de Diamond Nationals. Um, ahora, otro, a, a, hay, hay un torneo que tú quieres ir que, que no ha ido antes. Hay, tiene un torneo en tu mente que es como un Irish Open o algo así que no ha competido, que tú quieres ir o no. Exactamente, yo, fui, yo he competido en Europa pero no en el Iris Open ni en esos torneos, pero Dios mediante el, el año que viene con el favor de Dios pueda asistir con mi maestro, porque si voy, voy con mi maestro, sería ese torneo que es uno de los torneos que más se nombra en el mundo fuera de todos los eventos de acá, y si de verdad quiero ir porque tengo el hambre de ir a ese país y probar ese, ese evento. Sí, por supuesto, le pregunté Well, I asked him what was the most memorable uh, so far uh, in sport karate. He said the winning the whole year. He hasn't lost this year. And then now I asked him, um, excuse my translating, as uh, by the way. But then I asked him if there's a tournament that he hasn't gone to that he would like to. And he said uh, Irish Open. Okay. Uh, ahora, este año tiene un nuevo sponsor, Fighters Inc. No? Uh, y Top Ten, so... Uh, ¿cómo, cómo, ¿Cómo ha habido eso? ¿Tienen nuevos uniformes? Uh, ¿Están siendo buenos? ¿No? ¿Cómo? Mira, la verdad te digo, yo como capitán del Team Legend no me he podido reunir con el, mi maestro, como te digo, Alex, porque mi trabajo me ocupa mucho tiempo. Yo no tengo una hora que llegué de mi trabajo. Entonces, él sí me comentó ahorita en el Panamericano y le dije, bueno, maestro, en la semana hablamos, pero... Se me ha hecho difícil, pero sí me medio comentó algo para el año que viene que las cosas van a estar mejor, ¿sabes? No, ya, ya, y este año, está, ya, este año de verdad que están haciendo bien con, el, con los productos y, uh, y todo, empujándolo y todo, so, uh, eso es muy bueno. Y si hay alguien que, que that deserves it, como, no sé cómo decirlo en español, alguien que, tú sabes, que hace muy bien y, y um, no tengo la palabra para decirlo. Que hace muy bien su trabajo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y, um, y debe de ser sponsor, son ustedes, ¿no? ¿Entienden? Uh, so, uh, son ustedes porque de verdad que son buenísimos. Um, y uh, usted, ahora, Venezuela, yo vi que Tony fue a Venezuela hace poco y trajo uh, uniforme, fue como Santi Claus casi, ¿no? <risa> uh, para pa sus escuelas ahí, eso tenía que ser muy bueno para el país, ¿no? Porque 
uh, Fast Reader, como se sienten ahí, uh, Tony, eso fue muy bueno, ¿no? Bueno, sí, Ale, nosotros tenemos muchos, muchos peleadores en Venezuela, son de nuestra escuela, está mi hermano, aparte tenemos en muchos países, tenemos en Madrid, tenemos en Suiza, en Chile, Ecuador, Perú, en Argentina, tenemos muchos alumnos del equipo, por la situación se han tenido que ir, y entonces el maestro agarró, fue a Venezuela, hizo un torneo pequeño, metió más de 70 cinturones negros, este, le llevó su dotaciones a todos los muchachos allá, su uniforme, algunos le dio equipo, y todo el mundo está contento y feliz, esperamos el año que viene poder asistir unos, unos más a Venezuela y apoyar más a nuestra gente allá. Qué bueno, hoy Venezuela, Tony tenía un torneo muy grande en Venezuela, right? La batalla de, de, de Venezuela y tenía muchas personas también. Battle, Battle of uh, Venezuela, back, back then, it had like over 2,000, más de 2,500 competidores, ¿no? It was huge. Yeah. Sí, fue uno de los torneos que metió, que ha metido uh -huh. más peleas por equipo eh, antes de venirnos acá a Estados Unidos metimos 37 equipos que ya ah. tuvimos que cerrar las inscripciones y decir, ya no se aceptan más porque tuvimos que abrir cuatro áreas de, de combate para poder ubicar todos los equipos, pero ya no daba más y él tuvo que cerrar wow. ahí, todo. Eso es muy grande. Like some people, la gente habla de US Open o, o Irish Open que tiene tantas personas, pero ustedes, tú sabes, tenían, tenían eso también hay en Venezuela, o más grande, que tienen que parar, la, no puede inscribirse más nadie, ¿no? Sí, sí, no. bueno, los torneos allá empezaban a las 8 de la mañana, y los cintas negras terminábamos de pelear a las 2, 3 de la madrugada, porque en una categoría habían 20, 30, ah. 15, es muy fuerte la, la cantidad de cintas negras que iban a la batalla de Venezuela, y bueno, esperemos que dentro de poco se pueda volver a realizar desde acá. Yeah, yeah, no, oh. seguro. Pff. Wow. Oye, dice uh, Christian Rivas que mejor basketball, que eres el mejor de basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Se vale soñar. <laughs> hey, oye, entonces, man, Pablo no podía, um, que, eh, yo eh, tenía una pregunta para usted también. Um, eh, yo, yo trataba de hacer lo mejor que pueda está, está bueno, está bueno la entrevista uh, ahora el otro día tenía un um, Tony, le saqué una foto con la, la the Coke ¿no? de Coca-Cola que decía Legend uh, estamos jugando de eso como, pero de, ahora con el sponsor que tenemos nosotros con Taco Bell es algo yo creo que puede ayudar nada más que, no nada más que nosotros pero el deporte entero, porque ahora, como mira, Coca-Cola, ¿quién puede parar a alguien a, 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 a enseñar eso? Que, que hay Taco Bell en el deporte, y tratar de coger Coca-Cola, Burger King, tú sabes, otro, otra compañía grande, ¿no? Eso a lo mejor puede pasar, tú nunca sabes, ¿no? <risa> sí, Ale, sí, bueno, en Venezuela nosotros teníamos buenos patrocinadores, ¿sabes? Por eso yo viajaba, yo sí. siempre he sido uno de los que más ha viajado el equipo. A nosotros nos patrocinaba PDVSA Gas Petróleo de Venezuela y nos patrocinaban wow. muchas empresas grandes. ¡Wow! Entonces wow. Era, fue cuando empecé yo más a salir a todos los eventos más internacionalmente gracias a, a ese empuje que siempre ha dado el maestro Tony de siempre tener no a uno no, o a dos, no, sino todos somos iguales porque nosotros no somos una escuela, nosotros somos una familia. Si viaja uno, viajan cinco. Si viajan cinco, podemos viajar diez. Y así siempre ha sido el maestro, como lo estamos haciendo en este país también. Ya, yeah, no, qué bueno. Qué bueno, así es, así es. Y hay mucho, mucha oportunidad, que yo creo. Y el deporte está creciendo más, yo creo, ahora aquí en los Estados Unidos. Um, so luce, luce muy bien. Um, ahora, en el torneo Pan American, el, el próximo día tenía uh, la WAKC y... Uh, y mi papá uh, promotió a algunas personas, ¿no? Pero yo oí, lo, yo me tenía que ir porque tenía Justin Ortiz que se casó, pero yo oí que, que, que estaban dando patadas, ¿no? Para la cinta. <risa> que tú estabas dando las patadas también, ¿no? Y estaba muy fuerte. Mi amigo Ozzy dice que, 
que tú lo sabes, el estilo campo de verdad muy fuerte, que están volando, ¿no? Bueno, bueno Ale, yo, yo soy quinto campo en Dan, eh, quinto, que, quinto Dan en campo karate. Cuando yo conocía al maestro Manny, todavía tenía el cabello negro, yo era un muchacho joven, y yo siempre decía que el, que, que el campo tenía que ser en la realidad, porque si tú vas a la calle, tienes que irte a la realidad. Entonces, promo, la promoción tuvo John Curatolo y su, su alumno. Entonces, bueno, me dicen por patearlo y yo voy a la realidad. Así es, así es. Yeah. Entonces, así. <ríe> le metí un fronky donde, donde debe ser y... Pobre mi amigo John, pero salió volando, sí, de verdad, fue fuerte. Y tenemos que tener video de eso. Pero cuando tú estás pensando de, de la patada, tienes cinco dan, no, five, fifth degree, um, ¿qué fue la patada más fuerte que he tenido de, este, um, de, de tu historia de karate? ¿Tú te recuerdas la patada que te, que te dolió más? Oh, no. <risa> Cuando presenté para Cinta Negra, sí, claro que me recuerdo. Mi papá es un salvaje. Mi papá me dio una patada y yo daba vuelta, vuelta. Y de ahí en adelante, mira, el maestro Tony tiene una pegada también brutal, igual que el maestro Felipe Conde también tiene una pegada con la mano bien fuerte. Y tu papá, el maestro Manny, yo no quiero hacer, pasar de rango. Yo dije que me quedo en quinto dan, no quiero, no quiero. <risa> That's funny, that's funny. Oye, entonces, uh, gracias por estar otra vez en el show uh, de Point Fighter Live. Uh, congratulations otra vez ganando. Y, y el año que viene, no vamos a ver si puede terminar. Va a terminar este año sin perder. Eh, la, y, uh, y vamos a ver y si puede más de un año, ¿no? A lo mejor después de Diamonds, más de un año. Vamos a ver cuánto tiempo uh, dura sin perder. Eso es un streak muy bueno que tiene ahí. Yeah. Bueno, Ale, yo subí a pelear a, como te digo, yo subí a pelear a 30, 39 por darle, ocupar ese puesto de heavyweight, otro de nuestros alumnos, pero yo me vine a Venezuela siendo el número uno de allá, gracias a Dios, a mi esfuerzo, allá, allá sí entrenaba karate, todos los días, todos los días, y fui 18 años el número uno en el país, tuve muchos contrincantes fuertes como fue Brian, Luis Núñez, eh, sí. Hubieron muchos peleadores buenos allá. De verdad, te doy las gracias por tomarme en cuenta en tu programa. Aprovechar de mandarle saludos a toda mi familia, todos mis amigos que están en el mundo, en Venezuela, en mi barrio Antímano, que yes. eh, siempre me están apoyando, me escriben, vieron la foto de Panamerican. Oh, felicidades. De verdad, gracias, Ale, por tomarme en cuenta y por tomar en cuenta todo el equipo de nosotros que hacemos un sacrificio muy grande en este país para mantenernos en lo que estamos haciendo y para seguir adelante dejando el nombre de Venezuela y del Team Ley en alto. Sí, seguro. All right. Bueno, buenas noches. Thanks to everybody for coming on, uh, for watching the show and tuning in. Your Sargam is the legend on Team Legend, right? Okay, so, <laughs> buenísimo show. Los vemos. Buenas noches. Power, baby. Power.